Hi, uh, good morning. My name is Bruno Guicardi. I'm uh, one of the founders of CIT, which is a transformation services company that uh, works with big companies trying to transform themselves digitally. And uh, I'm here today with uh, Benedetto Conversano, which is the CDO of one iconic company, Centenary Company, uh, Avon. And uh, we're going to discuss a little bit uh, how they uh, are navigating the shaky waters of digital uh, on, on those days. Right? So, Benedetto, facciamo questo uh, in italiano? In Portuguese. In Portuguese. In Portuguese. Are you guys good there? Like, oh, your Portuguese and Italian are good there? So, uh, Benedetto, uh, could you uh, just kind of uh, tell us what, uh, what the potential you're seeing uh, in digital for a company like Avon, how you're seeing this playing out, and what are guys actually uh, doing about it in those days? Yeah. So, uh, actually, uh, to position the, the digital, let's say, strategy of Avon, I'd like to put it in the context of our overall business strategy. So, 18 months ago, more or less, uh, um, beginning of 2018, uh, the company started to formulate a completely new approach to the business, which is called uh, over Open Up Avon. Now, this strategy has four components. The first component is to relaunch the Avon brand. Now, let me check something. Can you please raise your hand who knows the Avon brand? All right, that's very good. So that, that uh, confirms our, our uh, numbers that there is a very, very high brand awareness. Now let's make a second test. Please raise your hand who bought an Avon product in the last three months. That's the problem that we had at Avon, right? <laughs> And this is what we are trying to resolve. So the first point was relaunch the brand. The second point was uh, what we call the, the second pillar of the strategy, what we call reboot direct selling, which means uh, uh, eliminate uh, all the barriers uh, to a seamless work process for our representatives. You know, we are a direct selling company. We don't sell to, um, to retailer. And, um, and therefore, uh, make their life simpler, recruit more and better representative, and therefore increase their earnings and our earnings. The third pillar of the strategy was to open up uh, what we call access, that is uh, basically boost e-commerce and enable consumers uh, to buy directly from Avon with the intermediation of representatives. And the last component, the fourth component of the strategy, is to be simpler and leaner. Now, the good news is, out three out of these four pillars uh, can be achieved only through digital transformation. I see. And, uh, and what, uh, what you guys achieved so far, like in that journey, where you are in that journey so far, like in terms of adoption of the people that are using the platform or the, what the tools that you made available for them? Well, um, we have started a very, very difficult journey, uh, a, a journey which is very complex because the, the, the scale of the transformation involves something like uh, five million and a half representatives around the world. For those who didn't hear the number, five and a half million representatives in 55 countries that are selling Avon products. So it's a massive, massive uh, transformation. Mm -hmm. Where we are, well, we are on a journey, so to say, a journey that is giving a, a very good results already, but also a journey that uh, requires still a lot of hard work. I see. So, so five million people. So, uh, the, most of our customers, they got, they think like, I know, just go through a transformation with a couple thousand people to convince, to embrace, and start using those tools and coordinate and align around digital is already tough. How you actually, you know, uh, what make you guys entertain that massive challenge? Which like, a, yeah. let's let's try to engage five million people to do, you know, to go in a journey together with us. So, what what was. Uh, what was the main motivation behind it? It's a, it, it is a tremendous transformation, and there is a fantastic story uh, which was uh, uh, triggering this transformation, which, by the way, is one of the best uh, uh, business uh, challenges that I ever had in my, in my careers. Um, well, for those who don't know, Avon, which is a more, uh, more than 130 years old, 10 years ago was selling $10 billion around the world, $10 billion product. Today, we sell five and a half billion. So it's a dramatic, dramatic loss of business. The, the, the value of our stock in New York stock, stock Exchange was about $45 10 years ago. Um, it reached $1.5 in fall of last year, 2019. Can you believe it? Dramatic, dramatic change. 
Now, why did it happen? It happened because the company was not uh, understanding what was going on around the world. And uh, this is the classic example of, um, of the frog that dies boiled in the, in, the, in, the hot of, uh, in the pot of hot water. When the temperature starts to go up, 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 you start losing 1%, 2% every year, 3%, and you basically you, you don't realize, and, uh, and then you have lost uh, um, a lot of your business. So this was a, a, a mandatory transformation that we have to go through. And, and why do you think that that happened? Like, like why, why, why do you think that, uh, that uh, was a difficulty to give up on the, on the core business? Was like a, how the company was, look, was seen digital? Was like a, a potential enemy? Why, why do you think that actually was like this? Like yeah. Why, why the, the reluctance to, you know, to embrace that new world? Like, yeah. It, it, it actually is a, uh, it's not so simple as it looks like, right? To say, okay, you know, we should change and so on. And, uh, for those who is in the audience has read the book, The Innovation Dilemma. Have you read it? Very few people, I highly recommend it. It's a fantastic book. And it's a book that uh, you know, can tell the story of many companies that in the last decade or more have lost business. One of the, you know, the, the case studies, the famous uh, story of Kodak, you know, they invented the digital, um, the, the digital camera, but they kept selling the, the film because the film is where they were making the highest profit. And it was exactly the same for Avon. So we wanted to protect our core, and the core being the brochure business. So we sell through brochures. Our products are in a paper brochure. By the way, the Avon brochure is the most printed um, uh, book in the world. Okay? I was working at IKEA before, and we were saying that the IKEA catalog one of the most, one, was one of the most printed books in the world. Well, it was true. But the point is that we print uh, uh, at 12, 12 of these books per year. IKEA prints only one. So it's a massive amount of printing. And it's our core of the business. And the other part of the core still, is... That you're, still, you're still printing a lot? We of still print. And that is, and that is the, the, the key point that I'm going to talk now. We still print, and we will continue to print, probably less um, and more, uh, and more uh, uh, environmental friendly. And the other part of the, of the business that we want to protect is our representatives. Okay? And so we lost uh, the concept that uh, we can still protect our core, but uh, um, let's say transforming our business. Uh, and uh, instead of using the, the dilemma of the or, shall we continue to do what we have been using very successfully for 130 years, or shall we transform into the digital age, actually the, the solution to the problem is the end. We can continue to do what we have been doing in the last 30, 130 years, uh, printing brochure and uh, letting our representative uh, visit uh, the homes of the consumer and explaining the value of our product, and at the same time, reach out directly to the consumers online and uh, enable them to buy directly from us, still with the intermediation of the representatives. And unfortunately, this... Uh, um, let's say, perception that we had a conflict in this transformation was what was the difficult part of kind the of recipe. A, it, it held the company for years, trying to it, it yes. kind of a just, just believing that they have to decide which way to go, like we have go directly and give up on all like five million people that have been with us for all these this years, or we just saw the idea was like, okay, let's actually empower them through digital tools to actually serve better our and customers, right? And, and, and how, do you, how do you actually get that, do you know, how, how, do, you, how do you get to that decision? Like, uh, what's, how, what is the process to decide what was better for the customer in the end? Like, uh, it's uh, not, not only what was better for the company, but... Uh, yes. So, it, it, you have to agree with the plan with the, the rest of the world, right? So, to, to actually the plan to, to, to work. That was very, very difficult. Actually, um, you know, there were different uh, uh, train of thoughts in the company uh, or school of thoughts in the company. And uh, uh, some people, let's say, really got the, the, the meaning and the value of the digital transformation, that, that uh, the, the future was really there. Uh, and actually, um, m many of us were thinking, you know, why, why the representative don't get it? Right? Why they don't get it? Right? Why they do just don't do it? Right? Why they just do we are giving them the tools. Actually, in the meanwhile, we were developing uh, uh, the tools. Why they don't do it? And actually, the mistake that we were doing is that we were looking at the problem from our point of view, from the internal point of view. 
So for me personally, the haha moment was when uh, we started to, uh, to uh, design and execute some specific training session for uh, what we call digital social selling. So we always have been doing social selling, and now we wanted to do, we want to do, we are, uh, we are uh, uh, boosting the concept of digital social selling. And we have been investing a lot of time and effort in really trying to understand the problem from the representative perspective. And so building some sort of focus group, really, with uh, uh, what is for us the art of the business, we really started to understand what were the concerns in the mind of these people, right? And the, one of the concerns that they had is like, uh, well, but this business is based on relationship. I need to talk to our consumer and I need to explain the value of, the value of our product we, because we don't do advertising. You don't see any advertising of Avon in the television and that's part of our choice. We don't want to put our money in the advertising. We want to put our money and we put our money in R&D, our product of our superior quality. By the way, Probably a large part of the audience have nev never even tried an Avon product, right? Raise your hand who has never tried an Avon product, all right? Well, you will do now because uh, there, is, uh, there are uh, you know, some delegates from our company that are going to distribute a little gift for, uh, well, I don't know if we can cover the whole audience, but uh, for sure we have um, a, you know, a, a few dozen of boxes, and you will find these, in these boxes some sample and uh, I bet you will be surprised by the outstanding quality of this product. I can tell you in the you, blind... You, to, you told me that uh, you're, you're winning from blind tests with uh, yes. uh, like a 10 yeah. times more expensive product. So uh, do, do the blind test yourself yeah. at home and see, uh, and see if you concur. Especially, especially actually in fragrances, when we do the blind test, we win with uh, uh, fragrances that have the double of the price point in the retailer. Okay, so superior product. Why? Because we don't give money to retailer, we don't give money to advertising. So our representative wanted to continue to, to, to have that contact with the consumer, and they had not understood that they continue to do it while they could, uh, let's say, start to become micro-blogger, micro-influencers, and that is when they started to, do, to use our digital platform to invest, uh, actually, maybe some one hour of their time during the day, but uh, uh, starting to receive a very, very high return on the investment in new customer that uh, they were uh, trying to uh, start to reach them to buy our product. It, it, it's amazing that you say like uh, the aha moment was actually when you found out that uh, you had to elevate the user needs, whoever we're designing the tools for, elevate their needs to actually understand what actually they needed from the tools and, and factor in their input to the tools, right? So that, that's, uh, that's uh, I would say, like in our work at least in the last 20 years, in the industry, that's, uh, that's the aha moment for most of uh, the companies there. I think like uh, usually when you're, you're a 100-year-old company, you do your own ways and you've done like, a, it's mostly uh, a one-way street, right? I talk to my consumers, they listen and they buy. So I, I have the power to influence. So the digital world, the, sh the, the power shifts to the people that actually you know they, they will use your tools or not if that generate any real value for them. So there's a power shift yes. that, uh, that uh, I think the most, the traditional companies have to go through to understand like, okay, it's not only about what I think is right, as you exactly yes, put exactly. it. Yes, exactly. It's like a what, what they think is right and we have to meet in the middle, you know, the, the overlapping what, what, what I want and what they want. So that's where uh, actually success um, comes out. Yeah. So it's uh, interesting that, uh, that, uh, that you mentioned just that. So, re so pay attention. So if you're a, you know, a, a hundred year old company, you know, and, uh, and, uh, and need to digital transform, that, uh, write that down. So, and, uh, so Benedetto, maybe we have just a couple of minutes. So how, wh where did you start? So this is probably one of, one of the questions that uh, when, we, when we talk to, uh, to big customers, like, hey, a, a, a problem this big, right? So how do you start tackling it? How do you start yeah. generating traction to, be, be, to get people behind it? Yeah. There's probably a lot of skepticism in the beginning. So how, tell me a little bit of now, how do you, you know? Yeah, I start? mean, I don't pretend I have the recipe, right? But I can share what I've done. What, yeah, what, 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 what worked for you doing. guys? Uh, and there are several components, let's say, that work very well. One thing is um, 
uh, you need to start to create some, uh, some uh, quick win and, and, and real concrete success cases. For example, for Avon, we decided to invest a lot in this, in this concept uh, in the UK. And, uh, and guess what? For example, in the UK, we have reached a, a stunning conversion rate on our website of 5%. I think we beat um, Amazon probably. Right? By, so, by I can, a large I can. so it's been really, it's been really fantastic. Now, of course, when uh, the other countries in the world, where there was also, you know, maybe not that level of maturity and uh, in the in the e-commerce business, uh, they started to see that hey, we can convert five uh, percent of our visitors on 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 our website. Of course, this created a lot of attention. Another approach that we started to. Uh, really build uh, in the markets uh, the, the local competency. So for a company like Avon, 55 markets, you can easily do the mistake of thinking only global, global, global. And that doesn't work, right? And you need to find the fine line between uh, having a global strategy, but then really, really understand that the consumer in Mexico is different consumer than in UK, than in Italy, and, uh, and then in China, right? And you need to understand. And therefore, we, 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 I have personally invested a lot in building local uh, competency, commercial companies in, in, com competency in, uh, in trading. And, um, and so, so, so like you, you did have a, a global strategy, like a global direction, but you empower the local markets to implement different tactics and, yes. uh, and different uh, go-to-market yes. approaches. We have, we have uh, uh, empowered highly the local markets, uh, but also we trying to avoid the excessive complexity and diversification because it's difficult to fall in the trap that then 55 markets and 55 way of doing and then you are killed as a company because the level of complexity just kills you with the cost. So what we have done, we have created a core team with five uh, key markets, uh, pretty diverse worldwide that we call the power team. And this is uh, uh, together with the people who work in the center of, of excellence, uh, they develop, uh, let's say, the best practice that then are being rolled out. I see. Just cool. wanted to mention before uh, we are kicked, um, we have been growing uh, the online business by 80% year what, on year. What I would like to ask you, how is the, the, the stock price at this point after all this? So the stock price uh, in um, uh, October 2018 was $1.5. And this spring reached uh, 4.5, so we have uh, tripled our stock price um, in basically, you know. Uh, so keep up the good work and uh, no nice flight. There is still a long way to get to 45 dollars <laughs> again, eh? but uh, uh, we will make it. But, uh, I hope you enjoy our product. Thank you so much, guys. Have a good event. Thank you very much.